sealed on the calendar for all Wyoming football fans. A visit from second-ranked Texas, 13-10 at the half. Joe Beninati and Glenn Parker with you for College Football On versus We Are in HD. And this game's a lot closer than we expected, Glenn. What did Texas do to reassert itself end of the half? Well, I think first off, Colt McCoy was decisive with the ball. He knew right where he wanted to go. Of course, Texas players, what did they do? They said, we're Texas. Let's just make a play. Nobody has to do anything special. Get the ball, make a play. They did that. Going to be a very interesting second half. And before we start quarter number three, let's send you to Lindy Thaxton. She's tracked down Wyoming's lead man. Coach, we talk a lot about your offense, but let's talk about your defense. What stands out to you in the first well, half? We've given up three plays. You take those three plays away, you know, they don't score. They might have a field goal in there. So we just got to do a great job of tackling and keeping them contained. Coach Brown says that their plan is to come out here and beat Texas. What do you have to do to beat this number two team? Well, we got to continue to protect the football. We got to make some breaks like we do with the block punt. We got to continue to play great defense, try to create some turnovers to give us a chance to get something going offensively. Coach, thank you. All right, thanks. Possessions. Numbers wise, in the opening half after 30 minutes, Glenn, does anything stand out at you with respect to the statistics? Well, I think when you're taking a look, third down conversions, neither team very good. And that's why there were so many different sets of downs through the, that first half. I mean, when you look at it, look at all the possessions, there seems like there was 20 possessions. Nobody had the ball more than about a minute and a half. It's because of third down conversion. Here at uh, War Memorial Stadium. Packed to the brim today, better than 30,000 to see Mac Brown and the Texas Longhorns come to town. Both of these teams in the early going of the season with 1-0 record. Texas, they've got Texas Tech next week. The Red Raiders, the only team to beat them last year, 39-33 in Lubbock. The Horns have won five of the last six against the Red Raiders. Ian Watts ready to kick off for Wyoming. They square off with Colorado at Folsom Field in Boulder next week. First time they see the Buffalo since 1997. Between now and then, what should be a very entertaining second half. On the run from the 18. D.J. Monroe turns the corner. The 100-meter sprinter barrels deep inside of Wyoming territory. Monroe took one the distance last week and nearly this time around. Well, it was a low kick and it was short. He picked the ball at the 20. Makes one good move and now he's on the edge. That's got sprinter speed. You can't kick short. Outkick your coverage, basically, because you're shorting on a line drive and give him, D.J. Monroe, that much time to get rolling. Angleton, Texas. In town for D.J. Monroe. Donald O'Neill Monroe Jr. goes by D.J. and he goes by you in a hurry. The most important drive of the game. First one of the third quarter. Both teams right here. This could decide the course of the next half hour, the hour of this game. McCoy on target to Kirkendall. The best starting field percentage from a perspective for Texas as we look at the two signal callers through one half. Well, you see the completions double for Colt McCoy, yardage triple, uh, but that interception, that's a big, big play for Wyoming. Texas working quickly. Vondrell McGree left that one on the turf, but no fumble there caused by the ground. McGee lost a couple of those last week. It was amazing, I thought, to learn that uh, the Longhorns did not have a ball carrier, a tailback, a running back lose a fumble all of last year. Yeah, they said it was an anomaly, and McGee, two of them last week, as you said. In machine gun fashion, they keep working to start this third quarter. John Childs brought down by Tashawn Gibson. They have really gone speed tempo at this point. They're getting the ball off in really about 12 to 15 seconds every time. Colt McCoy stays in the shotgun. First minute of quarter number three with college football on versus NHD today. Vondrell McGee inside the 10. Josh Bazoons, a 20-year-old from Minnesota, put a hat on him there. Tackling demons in the opening half for Wyoming. Linebacker Brian Hendricks, safety man Chris Brzezinski, both of them were practically in double figures in the opening half. So you know they're going to be tired. They didn't have much rest. They've been all over this field. And now a quick tempo is coming out. Option, McCoy with Trey Newton. McCoy keeps. Head for the pylon. Touchdown. That's why Texas is Texas. Change the tempo. Come out. Great return. Get yourself a touchdown fast. A nine-yard dash 
a short drive made to look very easy after the big kickoff return by D.J. Monroe. Talk about all three phases of the game hurting you. First, a, a bad special teams play puts you in a, put your defense in a hole, and then they do a great job, Texas does, with Colton Coy, up speed tempo, making the right throws, being decisive, and getting down the field. Extra point. Up and through. Hunter Lawrence converts. Texas now doubling up on Wyoming. Colt McCoy reading well and running well to the corner. Colt McCoy has been on the headset a lot today in Laramie, Wyoming. This has to be a much more pleasant conversation after his Longhorns strike quickly. Well, yeah, you know, he's getting his... His pointers from his coach upstairs, the offensive coordinator, they're trying to figure out, they figured out at halftime what, what Wyoming was doing to him. They came out adjusted, did a nice job. Wyoming out of the Mountain West. Browder, deep three, turned this kickoff. Texas hailing from the Big 12. And Glenn, let's get into it a little bit about the Mountain West Conference, earning more and more respect off of a brilliant year last year and a fine start this fall. Well, you know, last year you talk about uh, Utah and their run, and then you come in this year and BYU upsets Oklahoma. Uh, TCU playing at Virginia. They, you've got the Mountain West Conference does a good job of taking on big-time opponents at their place and beating them. And they're a fast-rising conference because of it. The Mountain West Conference wants to play all comers and prove, hey, they're for real. Slogan is it's a whole new rodeo here in Laramie. Boise State visits next year. Nebraska comes in here in 2011. As this kick, with the aid of the wind, goes right through the end zone again. Texas on top by 10. Glenn Parker, take us through the touchdown. All right, I just want you to watch the safety right here, Brzezinski. He's going to go in motion because he understands this is where the threat is. Now, as we run this, watch his angle. He drifts backwards, and as we're about to stop it right here, I want you to watch. Here's, here's Napton right here. He has to widen because he's got the back. So now this angle cannot get there. Watch his angle. He can't get there in time. It's too late. Touchdown. Great job of forcing the defense out of Colt McCoy. Now it's Robert Benjamin's turn as he snakes his way near the 30-yard line. We've seen only the junior at quarterback today for Wyoming. We heard Austin Carter Samuels would be visible before this day is through. Uh, and I think you've got to go with the tempo of the game. And right now, Robert Benjamin hasn't been lighting up the score, but he's been very smart with the ball. And they've done a nice job running this offense. On the option, Alvester Alexander lost the football there. Texas says they've got it. And I'll tell you what, a great strip. I think Keenan Robinson got the strip. It was it Aaron Williams who came up with the ball. Just a great job of defense getting after it, getting their hands on the ball, stripping it. All the defenders were there. Good job by Texas. you got to protect this ball. Watch here. Great job. That's Aaron Williams strips the ball out. Big defensive move all around. Big Lamar Houston comes up with the ball. Sam Ocho there to make the recovery for Texas. Aaron Williams did make the strip. And now Dave Christensen's team needs a, a defensive stand here. You can feel the momentum shifting. We always talk about the third quarter, first drive. How important it is both teams have to do it. Texas, they got great field position, went down to score. Wyoming turnover. Here comes Texas again. McCoy to throw. Gets away from the pressure. And then noses down at the 32. Texas on top by 10. Back to College Football Central. Here's Al. That's a bit of a shocker. It is. Uh, someone that's believed it would happen, I was certainly not one of them. Houston doing a great job. On second down, this is McGee. Stacked up to the outside. All the Texas players we talked to yesterday mentioned how well Wyoming floods to the football. We've seen it this afternoon. Oh, yeah. Uh, the, the linebacking core in particular, a lot of speed out there when you look at Foss, at uh, uh, Bazoons and Napton. They are flying to the ball. And I'll tell you right now, what I'm more impressed with is the D-line of Wyoming. Very lean, but very disruptive and putting a lot of pressure on Colton Hawk. Vondrell McGee, the junior from Longview, Texas, has been nursing an ankle lately, and he's hobbling now towards the sideline. You're going to need this guy all year. It's a great thing. I think right now you bring him, let him sit. You've got too many other backs you can use. Trey Newton 
stands in the backfield with Colt McCoy. They compliment him for his cutting ability. McGee over 60 yards on the day, a nice average to boot. Third down, let's call it six. McCoy on a short drop. Little jump pass to Newton is complete. There's a flag down after the scat back picked up a first down yardage. And right position where holding generally would be called. Holding. Glenn, for years, for many seasons, Texans fans know they, they've got a good third down back to come in. And there are a lot of people on the Texas sideline who believe Trey Newton can be that. Well, I think you're right, and we're going to get to see more of this guy, Trey Newton, but you watch the replay here, big Ulatoski. You know, he gets his hands, he's got one on the back, one on the chest. The umpire's sitting right there, he's looking right at you, he just can't do it. So Ulatoski, who is an absolute stud and very bright offensive lineman, gets proper holding. Unlike you, a former NFL lineman, they say he doesn't say very much. You're, you're more the talkative type. Oh, uh, well. Once you get to the next level, offensive linemen have to be, or you don't get anything. That's a good thing, by the way. On third down, McCoy shortly again for Trey Newton. As he looks downfield, he demonstrates that poise. One read, then another, then the outlet. Hey, credit Trey Newton there. He kept the play alive, got himself up into a little option route with the linebacker, and just extended the play by getting himself open for Colt McCoy to find it. Option routes. We'll see a ton of those next week from BYU. Certainly will. BYU and Florida State next week with college football on versus NHD from Provo, where the Cougars will try to defend their lengthy home field win streak. Hunter Lawrence already with a pair of field goals today. Fake. Shipley the holder. Looking for it in short yardage. It'll depend upon the spot. From the look of it, it does not appear he got it. He did. He did. It's Wyoming football. The Marcel Gibson loves it. A couple big plays here. The big things that, and ideas that come to mind. One, Wyoming ready for it. Watch the drive on the D line for Wyoming. They penetrate. Good job by every guy across the line getting there. But you're also going to like Texas going for this. I think, according to Mac Brown, the fake punt was not a fake punt. No, but this was designed. And why? Because he wants people around the Big 12 to see that they can fake things and have the game plan for them. So Jordan Shipley was stopped short. His best sport until he was seven years old was soccer. Turned out to be quite a football player. But there, after breaking loose from his holding duties, he was stopped short. And back come the Cowboys now in the brown and gold. A late first half touchdown, an early second half score, putting Gabe Christensen's squad in a 10-point hole. Well, Texas will come up to play press on Bolger now, because that's the dangerous guy. Empty backfield for Robert Benjamin. Takes the snap from center, bubbles it out there for David Leonard. Leonard, with a cavalry in front of him to block, picks up the first down yardage and across to the 47. Blake Gideon who is extremely physical. A big hit, but I'm not sure who got the better of it. <laughs> they both took a lick on that one. Gideon's a tough kid. Once played four games with a broken back in high school. Not easy to do. Benjamin carving ahead for little or no gain. Keenan Robinson, it's fun to watch him fly around the football. Well, he, he's, he's a physical specimen. A 6'3", 232, a good side backer. Really moves well out of that whip spot. Born in Omaha, Nebraska. Lived there till about age 6. Plano, Texas is now home. Five wide for Benjamin on second and long. He airs it out. Lobbing it ahead, incomplete. Looking for Brandon Stewart. Cowboy fans wanting an interference call. Not there on Earl Thomas. Earl Thomas did a great job running step for step. Turned to look at the ball just like he's supposed to. You take a look here on the replay. It's going to be to your right side. Ball's out there. It's a well-thrown ball. But a good job just closing ground, putting his arms up. Does not allow the wide receiver to gain real estate. That's a good job by Earl Thomas. Freshman All-America last year. Now in his sophomore season. Third down and nine here for the Cowboys. 
They bluff the handoff. Benjamin throws too strong for Zach Holger, who is sprinting to the sideline. Now, you expect Colt McCoy to throw high up here because the altitude would cause the ball to float a little bit. You don't expect Benjamin, who's working in it all the time, to have the same problem. Cool conditions, temperatures in the mid to low 50s today. There was a possibility for some precipitation. We have not seen any rain. It has not bothered Jordan Shipley and the Longhorns at all. The eighth punt of the afternoon. Austin McCoy to do the honors. Knuckles inside the 10, Shipley from the 7. A quick move, earned himself about 6 yards of real estate after a 44-yard punt. Texas has wrestled the lead back from the home-standing Cowboys in front of plenty of brown and gold. The year to have Al Troutwig, Roland Williams, and Christian Fourier with us. The Buffalo Wild Wings pregame show, Geico halftime show once we're done. If we have time permitting, the Craftsman postgame show to boot with plenty of highlights and analysis. And the guys will have a lot to talk about to, from today's outing here in Laramie. College football on versus NHT. The second rank horns in quite a duel. Colt McCoy. Safety valve Trey Newton in and out of his hands. He may have heard footsteps from Marcel Gibson. Well, that's what Matt Brown talked about at half. Too many drop balls. Too many times you're, you're faced with a good play and you drop something. That's what you can't do if you're Texas. You want to move the chains again. You've got to get yourself another score. You want to put this game, start putting a lot of pressure on Wyoming's offense to do something. Some points during the week, McCoy and the Longhorns were favored by as many as 34 points in this one. They trailed for a spot in the second quarter at 1.10-6. McCoy on the quarterback draw. Launching himself outside the 20. Krasinski will get credit for yet another tackle. But a great lead block by Trey Newton. Just comes flying straight through the middle. You watch this. Watch his lead block. You'll probably lose sight of him because look at 23 come through. Big cut. Dry, great job by Colt McCoy cutting off that block and getting himself in the yard. Alex Tony was the linebacker erased there by that block. First and ten for the guys in white. Total yardage on the day for McCoy. Over the middle to Shipley, breaking loose. Outside of the 40, another first down for Texas. The offense is churning now. Well, as they look, you know, it's a zone that didn't drop as deep, so there's a big window in behind the linebackers, and he looks for Shipley and finds him there. Jordan Shipley, outstanding throughout his career. Roommates with his quarterback, Colt McCoy. Their two fathers, Bob and Brad, played together at Abilene Christian. Colt McCoy on a little hook-off route, finding Jordan Shipley again. Alex Tony, the 21-year-old junior from Las Vegas, wrapped him up. You know, the coaches like Alex Tony. They say he's smart, that he... You know, backs up every position in the linebacking core, but, uh, you, you know, one of the problems with doing that is you have to be aware all the time of where you're at and what position you're in. They didn't have him a lot last year, Glenn. He played the first three games in a herniated disc in his back, ended his 08 season. Second down at five. On the ground, Trey Newton keeping those legs barreling ahead. Inside the Wyoming Here's 40. What we're talking about. Use your size. Pull those big guys. Watch David Snow. Watch Kyle Hicks. The right guard and right tackle. They pull out. Nice block. Good block again. Opening the hole for Trey Newton. All he has to do is run right off his tackles behind, make a cut, and he's got big yardage. Just a few moments ago, the starter for Texas, Vondrell McGee, limped to the sideline. Trey Newton getting more and more carries. He came off, though, after he ran out of his shoe. And this is Cody Johnson. The big back, better than 250 pounds, angles near the 30. Give John Fletcher the tackle. Yulikoski and the big boys in the trenches starting to, to road great. I never under, underestimate their pride. They probably felt hurt after that first half. They knew that those guys took it to them. They knew that Unrein and Stover and Fletcher were getting after the quarterback. So don't underestimate their pride. They want to run the ball, too. They want to get after Wyoming now and start punishing. Mondrell McGee back in the backfield for Texas. McCoy out of the gun. 
over the one-handed effort of Dan Buckner, not who the came up Gimpy in his own right. Not the first time we've seen Colt McCoy go high. Remember that altitude again. Really want to stress it. You might not get as tired, but you get dehydrated, and the ball tends to float, just like a punter. Just like you go to Rocky, you know, a cool skill, the Rocky spinning farther. That altitude really affects the way the ball flies on you. And we're talking about a quarterback who is incredibly accurate. He yeah. NCAA record for completion percentage. He's not been nearly as efficient today. Looking for a third down conversion. He gets away from the sack. Colt McCoy finds the open man. It's Buckner. He's got room in front of him. Touchdown. There's the extra weight room work for Colt McCoy. Too strong. Couldn't bring him down. That was a big guy trying to grab a hold of him. Does his job. Finds his receiver, Buckner. Great for a score. 33 yards for the faithful of the burnt orange. Buckner, who had a 51-yard TD pass against Missouri last year, and Dave Christensen, when the current Wyoming boss was the offensive coordinator in Mizzou, Mac Brown's team starting to exert its dominance. The extra point right down the middle. The number two ranked team in the land, the Texas Longhorns now. Out to their largest lead on the day at 17. Well, you'll see a trick on the left side, and that brings Fletcher up and under, but he can't bring him down. Colt McCoy's been lifted. Now watch. Squares his shoulders. Great job, Buckner, finding the hole. The void gets into that window, grabs the ball. You're not catching him. There's Big Buckner. You know what? Hey, it, in the first half, Texas scored 13 points. It's taken him seven minutes, eight seconds to score 14 points in the second half. We were asking Mac Brown what it was about Colt McCoy that he's improved upon over his time in Austin. And he, he gave us three things to, to consider. Confidence and leadership. Willingness to meet expectations. And he also said strength. He can break that tackle now. Yeah, he yeah. can run through people. Yeah, he's got the strength. And that gives him confidence. By the way, it's seven minutes and 52 seconds. My math wasn't so good. I was never a mathematician. Longhorns rolling with 21 on answer point. Buckner celebrating on the bench. This Wyoming and Texas rivalry, there's very little to, to think about when it comes to a series history between these two. They've only met twice before. Texas with a pair of victories. They have not met since the late 70s, 1978. But there is a gentleman in attendance today who's been on both sides. We'll get to him in just a few moments. As Marcel Gibson awaits seat. End over end. And as has been the custom all day, everybody in that end zone has been driven way too deep for a return. Here's Lindy Thaxton with a special guest. If there is a common tie between these two teams, it is this guy right here, Fred Akers, coached both teams. I've seen you on the sidelines, all smiles. What's it like for you to be here? Well, you know, I, I was telling someone a moment ago that I can't lose with this. I, I've got an investment in both these places, and I'm very proud that I have been at both of them. Very proud. Well, we will let you go enjoy the game. Thanks for your time. Thank you very much. Fred and Lindy, we appreciate it. Ground game for the Cowboys. Meeting a whole bunch of manpower in the middle of that Texas line. The Wyoming offensive line, they're getting one or two good blocks to play, but unfortunately it's always one block that breaks down that's killing them. And that, that, it only takes one missed assignment or one bad play on offense, and you miss the play. Robert Benjamin directing the Wyoming offense. He wasn't even here in the spring. Sidesteps the would-be tackler. First out near the 40-yard line. First down, Cowboy. Well, you have to like the play. He's looking deep, and he thinks he's got a guy. Rather than make the mistake and throw it up in the air, he does tuck it, does get the first down, does lift the fight again. The watch right here does a good job ducking under. Now he's looking down. He sees, but no, great eyes. He's looking, says no, and I take it and go. I want to thank all the guys with those highlights. That's fantastic. Joe Beninati, Glenn Parker upstairs. Lindy Thaxton along the sideline. Three cheers for all the men and women in our technical crew for their efforts yesterday and today. This one launched down the sideline and out of the reach of Travis Burkhalter, who's been quiet so far today. 
when you think about it for Wyoming, Dave Christensen taking over, hired on the 1st of December. Joe Glenn was let go in November after six years in a, on a record that was 11 games under 500. How much time, Glenn, normally would it take for a new coach to really instill his offense and his scheme and his philosophy? Well, you know, the thing about it, you know, you get a flag on the play late. The thing about it, it all just depends on the system that's going on, the players you have, and, and how well you tailor what you do to the players that you inherit. Flag down after Roderick McElroy made the tackle for Texas. At one point, Wyoming had a 10-6 advantage in the second quarter. Mountain West Conference officials today Crew Chief Rich Colin with the uh, signal. And this will back Wyoming up. Coach uh, doesn't live very far from the stadium, Glenn, and he was telling us uh, he likes his privacy and he's got plenty of it. Basically, he said it's his family and the antelope. Yeah, and I like the fact that they had a little senior uh, event out there and could shoot guns and have fun. He likes it out there where they can, uh, have, a, as you said, the privacy but the room to roam. What did he say? It was a little bit of Green Acres. 27-10, <laughs> Texas on top. Benjamin with a play fake. Going deep. Put a lot of air under this one. It was far, far incomplete of Dante Morgan. Texas in control here. Back to College Football Central. And Al Troutwick. <laughs> oh, Al, we all know. Every college football fan knows. That is a storied, storied rivalry. Here with Wyoming and Texas. 89 on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. Cowboys are shooting themselves in the foot. Going the wrong way. Thank you, Joe. Better be careful you don't blow your whole leg off. Where's Pistol Pete when I need him? Where's Cowboy Joe? I got nothing from you on that. Five wide for Benjamin. Here comes the pressure from Sam Ocho. Benjamin says, I don't need any of that. A little help, too, from Sergio Kindle, who can close quickly. Their most explosive pass rusher, according to a defensive coordinator, Will Muschamp. Yeah, he's got speed, he's got athleticism, he's an outside, he, he's the overhang player, just does a great job of, and one of those athletes, he's a guy who, you know, he'll be at the next level, for sure. Wyoming's offense really has accomplished not much today. You, you credit their special teams, their defense for playing, but they've got to help out their defense. Glenn Jordan Chipley is waiting for this one at the 37 of Texas. McCoy drives that liner right to him. Look out. Chipley breaking a tackle inside of Wyoming territory. It doesn't do much good to run a rugby kick and kick it straight to the guy so he doesn't have to move. Longhorns more and more effective as the second half rolls along. McCoy to Buckner. Touchdown and a 17-point lead. Clear skies over War Memorial Stadium in Laramie, Wyoming, where the host Cowboys are trailing the Longhorns by 17. Here's your Buffalo Wild Wings game reset. If you've joined us a little late, Colt McCoy and his troops have righted themselves, Glenn. Yeah, they have. What they've done is they've come out, they've played very good defense for the most part during the game, but they've righted the ship as far as special teams go, as far as their offense goes. You know, a telling stat is the fact of their average start position. In the first half, they started on their own 25 on an average. Second half, their own 48. That's a lot of yardage in what, that Wyoming has to make up. They've helped to some degree to quiet down the fans in Laramie as McCoy scrambles again. Floats this one down the sideline out of reach for his intended target, the former quarterback John Childs. Well, pressure again, and I'll tell you what, Greg Smith, the tight end, breathing a sigh of relief there because uh, I think he had a little bit of a hold going that allowed Colt McCoy to get to that edge and make that throw. But again, Colt McCoy showing that body strength, getting out, moving around. Josh Bazoons was the man who was trying to track him down. You know I'm going to love Josh because he was a, a center on his high school hockey team. Got to love that. Then again, if you're... You're living in Minnesota, you're playing lots of hockey. McCoy runs the option down the line with Trey Newton. Not a lot there. And Shamil Gary got in the way. 
Weston Johnson also assisting. Johnson was given a lot of credit by the coaching staff, Glenn, for helping ease the transition from the old regime to the new. Yeah, he, you know, one of the things Coach talked about was all of those guys that just really did a good job letting the new group settle in and then take ownership. Be a critical point here. Third down and seven. Cowboys would love to stop. They rush only three. They get pressure. They didn't get McCoy on the first whack, but they stopped them short of the first down yardage. Fletcher hanging in there. Yeah, 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 I, I, I'm slow to use the word typical, but Wyoming State is a very typical Mountain West defensive line. They're long, they're rangy, and they do a great job with their motor, never giving up and always going. You see Fletcher right there, of course, there's Stover and Unright, and they're, and they're linebackers. Everybody there, they're flying around the ball. They're just great desire. Fletcher said his team needed more discipline, and Coach Christensen has helped provide it. Fourth down, you be too long of a field goal attempt for the Longhorns go for it. McCoy. On the money there for Dan Buckner, who plays a lot like a flex tight end. Yeah, and that's really what he is. He's a big receiver, but, and, you know, you say the word tight end, he's just a, he's another receiver out there who's just a little bigger. He uses his body in the slot in traffic to keep, him, keep himself open. Walking gingerly back to his spot on the line of scrimmage. It's the second time this quarter I've seen him hobbled after bouncing back up. None the worse for wear, flexing that knee. First and ten for the Horns, who dominated in terms of time of possession. Trey Newton around the corner and flat. Great train there by Marcel Gibson. Well, you take a look. Gibson beats Shipley, comes up and just lowers the boom. That's his ninth hit on the day and his loudest. Well, you know, once again, you go back to what the coaches told us about him. Leads by example. Big time corner. We're seeing all that and more today. Three and a half to go in the third quarter. With college football on versus in HD. McCoy moving the Longhorns again. Opening up Jordan Shipley. Wrestled out of bounds by Marcel Gibson and Chris Brzezinski. That time, a great job by Shipley of finding the void and making Marcel Gibson try to recover. That time, Shipley wins the battle. There's a sixth sense between those two guys, right? They've played together for so long. Well, they certainly have communication skills. They certainly, they've been together in this offense so long. They know they have the same read. They really have different reads on a play. Uh, it is very rarely miscommunication. Trey Newton. On his way, Newton flashes in for another Texas touchdown. <laughs> Trey Newton received only four carries last week in that win over Louisiana Monroe. With Vondrell McGee ailing a little bit, Newton's become more active. Yeah, and, and what you, you've seen is the offensive line do a good job. Watch how many hats are on hats and how few Wyoming jerseys get off of blocks. Our Longhorns are rolling now, late in quarter number three. 34-10 for Texas, as Lindy Thaxton continues her conversation with Coach Akers. Yeah, we wanted to bring you back in, Coach, to talk about the plays you've been watching. What are you seeing, and is, is it a lot different than when you were coaching? Yes, it is. It's, uh, it's quite a bit different. The game is uh, more wide open. Uh, to me, it's more fun to watch. Uh, and uh, I'm sure it's more fun to coach. But I, what I've seen out here today, uh, I'm impressed with the way Wyoming is uh, playing with intensity. They don't have the depth that, that Texas has, and, nor experience with a new system. And uh, I'm impressed with it. And likewise, I'm impressed with Texas' big play capabilities. Well, they can burn you. Thank you so much. Enjoy the game. Thanks. Guys, we appreciate it. Texas now with 28 unanswered. I'm sure the coach is impressed, too, by the capacity crowd here at War Memorial Stadium, which will 
grow in terms of capacity in the future with the construction of some club and sweet seating. Another touchback. Texas on top by 24 as we send you back to College Football Central and Al Troutwig. Well, well, well. Turnabout is fair play. And by the way, I think Al and Roland and Christian are having uh, their share, their fill of pizza during those game breaks. Tons of them. Yeah, Al likes pizza. Does break. he? Yeah, and one thing, uh, you would know I, I worked with Al for a long time, and, and he was always the best at finding the best pizza in a given area. The man knows his pizza. That's a talent. Yes, it is. In motion, it's Leonard for the Cowboys in the brown and gold. Benjamin on the keeper, and swallowed up swiftly. And Ben Alexander right there did a Big great ben. job. Yeah, he just he he beat the block inside. Real hustle. He's fresh right now, using that big butt of his to get moving and did a great job of tracking down the play. That's not nice. But it's just the truth. The guys like that are explosive, man. Jumped into 10 games last year as Benjamin. Fires over the middle and has his target, David Leonard. Robert Benjamin was saying during the week he's become more and more comfortable looking for 33. Well, you, you, on that play, but in particular, he looked downfield with the one receiver, two receivers, looked back into the window. You don't like a guy to throw back inside, but he did a nice job of delivering the ball there. He's had the range throughout the day. We have not seen Austin Carter Samuels, another quarterback for Wyoming at all. This is complete to Burkhalter, breaking loose from one tackle and getting out near midfield. A gain of 11 there. Another first down for the Cowpokes. Just over two minutes to go in quarter three. Wyoming working rapidly. Benjamin nosing ahead to midfield. Robert Benjamin had to go through a full class load in the spring and the summer, Glenn, at Phoenix College, just to make sure he was eligible for this uh, 09 season. Yeah, and the fact he did it is important. It shows you the leadership and his ability to get something done. You love the tempo they've come out with on offense right here. They have really upped the tempo themselves right now. Juggled and eventually caught by David Tooley, who's a really a, a natural type tight end for this type spread offense. Yeah, you, you know what he is? He, he's... He's a guy that is is basically Dan Buckner, but on the other side of the ball. He's Wyoming's answer to Dan Buckner. 24 guys signed in their first recruiting class. 14 of them are already playing for Coach Christensen as that was deflected by Lamar Houston. Eddie Jones in there as well. Guys who can really create havoc. Second down and 10 with 90 seconds to go in the quarter. The Longhorns had a bit of a scare late in the second quarter. They were down 10-6. They've improved their fortunes of late. Movement along the line. Option kick for Darius Terry with a flag down. He picks up close to four. Offside, defense, number 33, five-yard penalty from the previous five, still second down. Huge crowd here in Laramie. They they added 2,600 seats with respect to bleachers in both end zones, and they were pleased to see this one be called against Texas. Plenty of folks partial to the brown and gold. A hint of burnt orange, though, throughout. You, you just know those Texas fans probably dipped in bought season tickets for Wyoming to make sure they had this date on their calendar. Dedicated fans that will travel well. See the entire end zone is burnt orange. Benjamin on the slant, knocked away. Good coverage by Curtis Brown. And then a late flag hits the turf. It, it did appear as if Curtis Brown might have wrapped a, his upfield hand around the waist. Pass interference, defense, number three, spot foul, first down at the spotter foul. Mac Brown certainly didn't believe it by his look. And here you're going to look at it. You're going to good look at it from here. Keep it on his right hand. He's over the shoulder with it. Exactly. Good call by the officials there. Great job by my spotter, Sam, catching up on it, too. Eagle eye. Eagle eye and fast hands, too. Curtis Brown's got a million and one nicknames. One of which I like the most is the cat. He never falls down. 
Benjamin steps up in the pocket, heaves it ahead, and over top of his target, David Leonard. Glenn, we've been saying how well Texas travels throughout the day. We know they get the fan support. When you look at it numerically, maybe they had an impact on this graphic. Yeah, you think so, huh? <laughs> look at the, the season tickets by season, or season ticket sales by season. Take a look at that. They Huge climb. In Wyoming. To almost almost 2,000. I'm not, remember, I'm not a mathematician. Benjamin rolling out. Tiptoeing on the sideline there is Burkhalter. Just shy of the first down after a gain of eight with less than a minute to go in the third. Wyoming with a sustained drive here. Benjamin sends three wides to the far side of the field. Tenth play of the drive. They're in a heavy right formation on balance. Movement early. You were watching the walkthrough yesterday, and you said they work out of this unbalanced line quite a bit. They do, and, and they, they came out of here, and nose guard jumped over, but the tight end jumped as well. We'll see what they start. Start. Offense number 88, five yards heavily, still third down. I can guarantee Dave Christensen right there not happy with that. A chance to get a first down, and you jump. You're probably going to go for it anyways here. Probably gonna, you're probably going to consider two downs here to get this first down. Texas has been the more penalized team today. Let's see what Coach Christensen has dialed up for a third and seven. Robert Benjamin needs to get coordinated with his head coach a bit more. Coach Christensen told us that if the offensive coordinator, Marcus Arroyo, makes the call, it flows through him. The kids on the sidelines signal it, but I'm sure he's got full veto power. Folks, the NHL is back on versus. An opening night double dip. First, expectations are high for Ovechkin and the Caps. They take on the high-flying Bruins. Then, the Sharks look to rebound from last year's disappointing playoff exit against the Avs. It's the NHL on versus. The season opener right around the corner, October 1st. It's chilly enough in the booth, Glenn, for us to make our own ice hockey <laughs> rink up here today. It's a little cold. You, you know you're in Wyoming right now, don't you? The wind comes whipping into the booth. Longhorns fans feeling a bit better about their chances now. They were a bit nervous late in that first half. Benjamin to the sideline. Runs into some traffic there, bouncing off his own left tackle, Ryan Otterson. Flag down on the play. Illegal shift on the offense. Two men moving, his decline, fourth down. So they had an illegal shift because no, they never got set on the line. Now it's fourth down. You put yourself, uh, you know, the, the, what's happened here for Wyoming is going to be that Dave Christensen has a lot of things to coach in the coming week. Fourth and long. Benjamin fires just off the fingertips of a diving Travis Burkhalter. And this ball goes back over to Texas with just 10 ticks to play in the third. Longhorns. Traveling to Laramie, trying to improve their mark to 2-0 and in advance of a big showdown next week. With Texas Tech looking to avenge last year's lone setback. Yeah, and, and, and if you remember that game, the way it ended, all the things that happened, the missed interception by Blake Gideon and the, the, the reception by Crabtree. Just a great game, very exciting. Trey Newton has been very effective in this second half. Pounding his way for first down yardage. Bazoons and Marcel Gibson teaming up on the tackle. Glenn, I have to ask you, how does Nate Newton produce a son who weighs just 200 pounds? Big Nate Newton? Well, genetics are a, a funny thing, are they not? Apparently so. Apparently so. We are done with three quarters at War Memorial Stadium. The burn orange, the leave it, and the second-ranked horns.
been a pleasure to bring you college football today on Versus, available to you in HD. Joe Beninati, Glenn Parker upstairs, Lindy Saxon on the sideline. Texas has turned things around, Glenn, with a big third quarter. Well, yeah, you know, you, we talk about the importance of the third quarter, the importance of that drive coming up. They had the ball, it was a short kick, they scored, and they just turned the tide very quickly against a very game Wyoming team. McCoy looking for it all for Jordan Shipley. The ball is incomplete. More and more big plays for Texas in the third quarter. Nine of them are better than 10 yards plus. I don't know. Did they have that many in the first half? They were stymied for the most part by Wyoming's defense. But as the fourth quarter unfolds, things are back on track for Mac. Empty backfield. McCoy out of the gun, the hits for Malcolm Williams, who's dropped in his tracks by Marcel Gibson. Texas leading here by 24, back to college football, Central and Al. I'm just wondering if you got the cheese in the crust, Al, the extra cheese for Pizza Hut. Very nice, nice little touch. That it is, Jeff. You don't like that, do you? Now, you're, you're a pizza snob. No, I love pizza. Are you kidding me? I'm not saying you don't like pizza, but I think oh. you like the flat stuff better than the thick crust. I'm a thin crust guy. I thin crust so. guy. Yeah. I knew it. Well, because you get more cheese and fattening goodies that way. Well, <laughs> start. 71 offense. Five yards, definitely. Down to Stokely. Back up the horns. Four times a national champion in their story tradition. The 05 national championship, the last one on the ledger. Next week, back home on that new field turf at Royal Memorial Stadium. Mac Brown, kiddingly during the week, was saying, you know what, we want burnt orange turf. After watching Boise with all its oh. success on the Smurf turf. Can you imagine that? Third down and 11. Fans getting loud again. McCoy. And Shipley broke off the route. It's incomplete. Texas sideline wanted a penalty. Well, I'm not so sure he broke off the route just so much as Marcel Gibson popped in real good at about seven yards deep. That'll do it. <laughs> I think that's why they wanted that flag. McCoy and Shipley, the best of buds. And you know what? They watch those deer hunting shows on Versus. Well, you can see McCoy giving the ref a big earful there saying, hey, give me some love. My guy out there got just popped. McCoy and Shipley, both like you, Glenn Parker, they love the outdoors. Hunting time here for the Horns. A low liner, look out. Picked up by Leonard. And as he shimmies across the 20, he will not go far after that 44-yard boot. Folks, coming this December, Versus premieres a brand new series. It explores what it takes to tackle the world's toughest sports jobs. Former NFL tough man Junior Seau takes on the jobs that make sports really work. Sports Jobs with Junior Seau premieres this December only on Versus. I need a show kind of like that. Really? Yeah, couch jobs. How, how do you do uh, how, uh, jobs you can do from your couch? Austin Carter Samuels has come off the bench for Wyoming at quarterback, and he keeps it to get himself right into the game. Coaches were telling us about the, the different personalities between the two quarterbacks. As you see what Carter Samuels did last week. Benjamin's more introverted. Carter Samuels loves the spotlight. Now, Carter Samuels, they said he is, he is an outgoing, gregarious, very talkative young man. Big word there. I know. Carter Samuels feeling the heat now, and he gets leveled. Dropped in his tracks. Calvin Howell finished him off. Texas on top by 24 as we share time with Lindy Daxton. Yeah, and let's talk about Karsten Swede, you know, downgraded down to the third string there. He's acting like nothing has changed, the coaches say. They say he has a great attitude. In fact, the coach says he often walks by and catches him watching game tapes as if nothing has happened when everyone else is gone. Well, they pretty much demand, Lindy, that he be completely engaged. They say they were very honest with him from the get-go. As Darius Terry knights out near the 35-yard line, they'll mark him out at the 33. Now remember something else that Dave Christensen told us. Every day is a QB competition. Well, Marcus Roy also backed up. Now, while, while Carson Sweeney is the third-string guy, watch 
Carter Samuels here to see what he brings to the table against a defense that knows what they're going to do. As the youngster keeps it on the option, he's close to another Wyoming first down. And you see him jump up, he's bouncing around, he's clapping his hands, he's pointing downfield. They talk about this guy, you know, being outgoing and the leader, but they also talk about him being a better person than he is a QB, and they think he's a pretty special QB. Marcus Arroyo, the offensive coordinator, knows him very well from their time. Marcus was in San Jose. This youngster is from San Jose, California. Carter Samuels to throw. Wow. That was nearly a pick six for Earl Thomas, who will be as productive as they come in the secondary for the Horn. Well, what that was is a little disguised by Earl Thomas. When Carter, uh, Carter Samuels came out, he thought he had a little void over there and threw. Earl Thomas way too fast, closed that gap and filled that void. You told us that was one of the benefits of good speed on defense. Oh, yeah. Bubble screen blown up. Incomplete, incomplete. That was a forward pass. If I'm uh, Carter Samuels, if I'm Austin Carter Samuels right there, I uh, I bring the ice to my receiver, and maybe I'll buy him lunch because they just about got him killed right there. Tight end Orlando Arnold, who's lost 35 pounds from a year ago to be more speedy in this spread offense. Third down and 10. Fourth quarter, just past three minutes old with college football on versus. Carter Samuels under heat and dragged to the turf by Dustin Ernest. Well, you've got a fast defense that can play fast right now. They're not worried what's coming on. They've got a third and ten. They're allowed to attack and pin their ears back and all the other cliches you've heard. Well, that's going to get you every time if you're Wyoming. It's his fourth year in the program, and Ernest has been a special team stud in the past as he spells the starting linebackers today. Austin McCoy to punt. He's been a busy boy today. Jordan Shipley is deep. A soaring boot. Shipley from the 22 with plenty of room. Jordan Shipley across the 43 and a flag flutters down to the earth. 47 yards on the punt. 22 on the return for Shipley. And then we'll hear from the Zebra Stripes. On the return, holding number 10 on the returning team, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, will be first down for Texas. Mac Brown's coming out saying, wait a minute. I don't even think I have that guy on my team. It was a confusing day from the start. Gets a little bit more confusing with college football on versus. How's about that for a pretty point of view from just outside of War Memorial Stadium in Laramie, Wyoming, where we originate college football on versus today in HD. Texas coming to town, first time ever. And moving into cruise control a little bit in quarter number four. Well, Joe, talk about up-tempo and what these teams are going to bring to the table. This is the 29th possession of the day. Texas is 15th. Lots of series. McCoy, elusive as ever, picking up Kirkendall, who produced a pretty touchdown earlier in the day. Gain of five. Interesting with a 24-point lead with 10 minutes to go, you still have Colt McCoy in. You still have a lot of your top guys in. They want to get them their reps, get them used to a, what could be a very interesting performance next week. And, if possible, I'm sure build up some numbers. I think you might be right there. Trey Newton driving ahead, although Mac Brown told us a little bit different during the week he said we won't if it's if it's over and done with we won't keep the big boys in there just for stats purposes right they want to give the young kids who might not get in the game a thrill well a thrill for playing for texas but also you know a guy like uh, garrett gilbert that's your backup quarterback get him some reps so if, if in a big time game you need to go to him he has that backup he has that in his brain that he can do it Along that sideline, you'd find big number three, and I do mean big. What a good-looking young quarterback Garrett Gilbert is at six foot four and better than 200 pounds. Yeah, we watched him throw the ball in in pregame, and just a rifle of an arm. Really good touch on it as well. And talking to him yesterday, real humble kid, seems to get it. Longhorns 
Trying to drift time off the game clock. Colt McCoy to throw over the middle. Nice job there. Buckner opening up and then reaching down low to make that knee-high grab. Buckner still walking a little bit uh, gingerly, as you said, on that ankle, but they're keeping him in there, getting him running. And, you know, they, they've done this a little more and more, just using speed. And he just to get that bubble right behind the linebackers, they've got the speed in the slot. They've got the speed with, with you know, not only Buckner, but also Kirkendall. They can get there. Texas on the move. McCoy in a short drop. He likes what he sees from Buckner. He goes right back to him. Napton and Johnson combining on the tackle. Pickup of nine. Colt McCoy, they rely upon him to make so many of the calls at the line of scrimmage. He can change things. He's become more and more adroit at that. And number four has been the object of his affection of late. Run it with Trey Newton. Kept his feet moving, tumbling inside the 25 of Wyoming. Trey Newton, who redshirted last year. Comes in, like so many of the youngsters on that Texas sideline, with great uh, pedigree, great resume, and all the hype. Well, Mac, one thing Mac Brown's done in the rebuilding of Texas since he came on board is to go after the best recruits, bring in the best recruits, get the Texas kids. Most of the kids on this roster are from Texas. Wyoming asks for timeout. Nine minutes to go in the fourth. Texas in charge in Laramie. Al, thank you very much. If it gets any colder, I may need to borrow that headgear here. Everybody's starting to bundle up. It's 34-10 for Texas on top of Wyoming in Laramie. Next week, Florida State and BYU with college football on versus. It'll be interesting to see Christian Ponder match with, with Max Hall at the quarterback position. Wide receiver three to Childs. Beautifully blocked and Childs dashes into the end zone. Execution was perfect. Well, that's where you see the, the fatigue on the defense of Wyoming coming into the play. They couldn't close down. They didn't, didn't play it as well. Didn't spot it out and see it early. But a great job by Texas. Hey, use your speed. Use your horses. Get after them. I think that we might uh, might be the last of the first offense we see from Texas now. Up. Going to be 41 to 10 if they convert on the extra point. John Childs was switched to a wide receiver during spring practice. He's another guy who runs the 100 meters in under 11 seconds. The extra point try has they been good all day. Good once more. Colt McCoy has been sprinkling it around here in the second half. Well, your wide receiver screen, good blocking, big the big offensive lineman getting out in front and smacking people. Of course, the fact is Childs is good enough, big enough, and strong enough and fast enough to, to convert for the touchdown. That was awfully nice. Beautifully blocked. You give credit to Trey Allen for jumping out there, yeah, yeah. putting a hat on someone. And the Longhorns with five unanswered touchdowns. A week from today, Texas will tangle with Texas Tech, trying to get some revenge for a 39-33 loss last year in Lubbock. Wyoming. They'll head for Colorado, Folsom Field in Boulder. And that will be a rivalry of sorts. Remember that most of the kids on this Wyoming roster come from Colorado. The yeah. majority of the kids come from there. They recruit heavily in the Denver area. There ought to be a really good battle down there in Boulder. Once they're done with that one, it'll be a Mountain West Conference home game with UNLV here on September 26th. These Cowboys lost to the Rebels last year. They won just one time in conference play. From the two. And across the 20. Friends, it's time for your Miller High Life common sense play of the game. It comes from the Texans side. The elusiveness of Colt McCoy and the elusiveness of Dan Buckner. Looking up for a touchdown that helped turn the tide. It was an outstanding third quarter for Texas. It certainly was. And on that play, so much went on. Not only the strength of McCoy, 
Buckner getting open and making some great moves. But how about the downfield blocking of uh, Newton? Doing a great job getting his arms inside, so keeping it clean and getting the lead block for a score. 41-10, Holt McCoy's numbers again over 300 yards in passing. 30 for 47 as he continues his candidacy for the Heisman Trophy. So close last year to Sam Bradford as the runner-up. Making his case, I think, again, uh, if you look at the body of work, not just the second half. If you wanted to break it down and say, well, he didn't do anything in the first half. He didn't look good. Yeah, but like he responded. He came back with a very strong second half and has looked good. Alvester Alexander was bear hugged by Ben Alexander. No relation, we presume. Colt McCoy could be through for the day. Saw Garrett down there throwing, Garrett Gilbert throwing around on the sideline a little earlier, warming himself up. You know his daddy very well. I did. I played with his father for four years at the Buffalo Bills. Gail with a few guys never go to, well, I think maybe the only guy now that I think about it, to go to five straight Super Bowls. Clean shaven Colt McCoy. His offensive line kept it clean today. Lindy Thaxton has more. Yeah, the McCoy mustache caused quite a stir. Colt grew the mustache along with some of the offense during camp, and fans went crazy on the web. Some loving it, some hating it. His teammates told him he looked like an 80s tennis player. Colt says every time he looked in the mirror, he'd say, wow, this is just gross. And he told me yesterday that thing, Joe, is never coming back. Lindy, he said it would take an awful lot. And he said that the offensive lineman hatched the idea, Glenn. And if you're a quarterback, you better listen to your old lineman. Well, you treat them right, and they'll treat you right, that's for sure. Wyoming Cowboys on fourth and seven, forced to punt again. Mac Brown and the Longhorns over the last 11 seasons. No team in the nation with more victories. Well, you know, he, he's changed a lot about Texas. When he came back, when he got there, you know, one thing that people said is that he was more of a down-home style than the previous coach, John McAvick. And then one thing you listen to all the players and what they say about it, it's one big family, and it starts with Mac Brown. And we certainly felt that when we interviewed him over the phone and then when we met with him all yesterday. It is a family atmosphere with the, at the University of Texas program. Mac has eight years left on his deal and no plans for retiring early. Defensive coordinator Will Muschamp is the head coach designate for the future. He's patient, though, as this one will come to rest just inside the 35. Longhorns have Texas Tech next week. Last year, Glenn, they were involved in a thriller with a red raid. New quarterback has come on. It's Garrett Gilbert, the freshman from Austin, who owns five state high school passing records out of Lake Travis High School. Be interesting to see how much they let him loose. Texas has this one very much in their favor with college football on versus. Number two ranked Texas has been touchdown happy in the second half. They had a 13-10 lead at the break. They've enhanced that quite a bit. And now the Longhorns will turn the offense over to the prized recruit, Garrett Gilbert. It'll be interesting, as I said, to see how much they turn him loose, if they let him throw down the field, what they allow him to do. Of course, uh, some new offensive linemen in as well. D.J. Monroe, with all that sprinter speed, gets outside for close to five. Gabe Napton. Never coast, the coach says. Say he he never takes the play off. Yeah, uh, and, and, and you know it, it, he's one of those guys. It's a motor guy. It's a Mountain West guy. Motor because they didn't have the speed. They didn't have all the big numbers of, the, of, of some of these other guys. So they make up for it with that motor. Gilbert on a brief little roll hits another track star there, Marquise Goodwin. Here's a guy who's come out of nowhere. He's at Texas on a track scholarship. Yeah, fast as can be at 6'3", 220, can move. You know, it's one of those things that uh, these are guys that can just get it done. And it seems that Texas roster is just full of one guy that looks just like another guy who's got the same speed. It, it, it's got to be frustrating if you're one of their opponents. As the clock ticks below, seven minutes to go in the fourth. Longhorns will gladly run precious time away. The inside handoff for DJ Monroe. Marquise Goodwin, an outstanding track athlete. World Junior Championship, the World Triple Jump Champ. 
in the summer of 08. They weren't uh, counting on him at all in the football sense, but he was very highly regarded for that Longhorn track team. Second down and six. Gilbert looking over the top, throws that one into traffic, it's deflected, and it falls incomplete. Jamil Gary was close to that carom, he had three picks last week. Browder, able to break it up. Well, you see how far that ball bounced and went flying, just how much arm strength that Garrett Gilbert has when he throws the ball with that much zip on it. I mean, he was practically just a baby when you were playing. Yeah, yeah he was NFL only two or three. Father, right? Last I saw him. Coordinator. Well, his father was just a phenomenal athlete, a great quarterback, a guy that I didn't believe really ever got the chance to shine as much as he should with the Buffalo Bills, because, of course, we had Jim Kelly and Frank Reich, but uh, one of my favorite teammates, and, and Gail Gilbert was a guy that honestly could have, I, I think, probably should have had even a better career than he did. Offensive coordinator at Texas, uh, it's Greg Davis, and he says of all the five-star recruits, Gilbert may be the most unassuming. Yeah, and we, we talked with him yesterday for just a bit, real humble, very polite young gentleman, uh, just a nice kid. But it seems that Texas is full of those type of kids when you get down talking to them. Since the year 2000, this is just the second game for Texas against a Mountain West Conference foe. They squared off with TCU back in 07. TCU in action today, trying to tangle with uh, Virginia. Mac Brown and the Longhorns with all those 10 plus win seasons, one after another. We're enjoying Wyoming and Texas today. I'm sure it'll be a great atmosphere at Lavelle Edwards Stadium in Provo for BYU and Florida State. That's the next one on the docket with college football on Versus. Excited to get up to Provo, excited to see both of those teams in action. Cody Johnson taking this one out of the backfield from Garrett Gilbert on the short pass. Wrapped up by Brian Hendricks. You won't have to rock Brian Hendricks to sleep today. He has been running all over the field and has got close to 15 tackles. Yeah, he's, he's had a very good game. He's been very active. Uh, phenomenal in the first half, of course. Second half, hasn't. none of them have had the game they would like. You know, we were talking about TCU tangling with Virginia. Of course, the last score that we heard was TCU up, I believe, 40 or 30 to 8 in the fourth quarter over Virginia. What do you make of the ACC as David Leonard drops back to receive this punt? Well, these things are kind of cyclical, and you know, I think at any given time, one conference after another kind of falls prey to maybe not playing as well as they would like. Malcolm Williams will down that six inches in front of the goal line, and the Burn Orange fans like the special teams work. Congratulations are due along the sideline as we send you to Lindy Thaxton. Let's talk about the Acho family. They are from Nigeria, and tradition there calls for the family's oldest son to get back to his father's village. Well, their father, Sam and Emmanuel, built a compound for missionary work for their grandfather. This summer, Sam and Emmanuel joined their parents and dozens of doctors to help people in need of medical care there. Two other Longhorns win, Trey Allen and John Gold. The players, they played with the kids there. They gave them Texas T-shirts. They helped 3,000 people, guys. And Sam Acho says, you go to give back, and none of us wanted to leave. Lindy, that's just terrific work. Thanks for bringing it to light for us. As Sam Acho will catch his breath on the sideline. Texas going to its second stringers. There's a brother Emmanuel working in the linebacking core. It should be mentioned, Texas is playing without its normal starting linebacker today. Jared Norton out after injuring a knee last week against Louisiana Monroe. Sad insult to injury. They just got a penalty against Wyoming and moved them about six inches back. Which is, you know, it's a risk to work back. Now you go on a long count, try to get Texas to jump. What are you going to do? You can't, you can't put you into the end zone. Less than five to go in the fourth. Darius Terry bouncing off of one intending tackler. Ben Alexander, real good penetration there. Really read the count and got in the backfield to help out with the tackle. Brian Robertson was nearby as well. His cousin, Linus Swede, the former Texas star wideout, playing with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Austin Carter Samuels on the handoff. And the Longhorns are bucking for a safety here as Alexander straightens up the ball carrier. They're going to give him about a yard and a half game here. And 
I might heave one up just to, so I don't get a safety. Just throw it up there. Just over four to go in the fourth. And down the stretch with college football on versus. It'll start, what, about a two-month run for us, bringing you some of the finest action from the best conferences around the country, and it's one of our favorite times of the year. Exciting. Very exciting, some of the games we have coming up. It's, it's particularly next week. This pass complete to the former tight end, Jesson Salyard. And here's a peek at what's to come with college football on versus in the near future. Well, excited to see BYU in action, TCU in action, Utah. What's most important? Take a look right there. Look at the rankings. Number nine in the country, number 16 in the country, number 17 in the country. We're seeing great games. And then look at that TCU-BYU matchup coming down the line. That's some great games here, Joe. And I don't think it's right to call Colorado State a sleeper. They have turned things around. They're going to be a factor, too. Certainly they are. Coach Fairchild's done a great job. Bold game, getting it done. Uh, they're really going to push. And, of course, beating Colorado right off the bat, their rival. That's a big game for them. Time keeps ticking. Wyoming entertaining Texas for the first time ever today. Had a glimmer of hope late in the first half when they actually had a 10-6 lead. They have not scored an offensive touchdown this afternoon. Around the country, there are 22 new FBS teams with head coach, new head coaches at the helm. Three of them inside the Mountain West. Dave uh, Christensen, Wyoming, of course, and then he's the one I think that everybody looked at because of this game and coming from Missouri and what did he do. And uh, Dave Christensen really impressed me just sitting there meeting with him, his feel for his guys, his feel for this community, how he recruits here. Uh, I, I think he'll have some success here if he just keeps that up. He said recruiting was all about building relationships. He hired a staff with a lot of energy. What is it, five guys who are under 30 years of age? Yeah, i got to get out there and meet these kids, build a relationship, get them to the campus, and he thinks he's got them. If they come here, they'll love it. This one is dropped off for Brandon Stewart. As he tiptoes across the 35, gain of 14. Cowboys will try to improve their road record inside the conference. They were winless last year. Their first road test in conference comes against Air Force, and that's no easy assignment against the Falcons. No, no never easy to go down there, play against the, the, uh, those cadets the way that they are so disciplined and so tough. They swing it out for Alvester Alexander. He's brought down. We send you to College Football Central and Al Troutwick. We will look forward to that. Thanks a lot, Al. Back here for the conclusion of this one, which has just a little bit more than 80 seconds in it. Moving forward, Glenn, what do you think about this uh, Texas team that is on a national championship mission? Well, I think they definitely got the horses to get there. They need to play better complete games against opponents. Now, this was an opponent that they were expected to win, expected to win big, and they did that. But against a better opponent, have the type of first half you had today, and you won't win. So they've got some things to clean up, but that's why you play a non-conference schedule early in the year, and that's why you come up to a Wyoming, and, and you, you get to show yourself a little bit. Carta Samuels drill by Marcus Davis, the freshman from League City, Texas. Enrolled in January to get ready for spring drills and getting a chance to get into the act here in this second half, which has treated Texas oh so well. Well, again, a, good, a sign of a good team. It wasn't how they reacted to the to the block punt. It's how they responded. Came right back with a touchdown. Got the ball again to start the third quarter. Back with a touchdown. Great special teams from there on out. They did exactly what they had to do to take charge and win. They responded very well to adversity. Shows a lot. It is a big-time program, big-time school. That's why they're looking at hoping to have a Heisman Trophy candidate as well as a national championship. Garda Samuels dancing away from the pressure. Off the chest and hands of James Carraway. And there will be one more play. Colt McCoy and the Longhorns, a scare in the first half. They were trailing at one point in this game, late in the second quarter, 10-6. Then they got things corrected and worked very effectively in the final 
30 minutes. This will do it. Launch down the sideline, it will fall incomplete. This one's in the book. Texas coming to town, improving to 2-0. Dave Christensen across the field and congratulates the victorious bench boss, Mac Brown. 41-10, convincingly for Texas after that early scare. Be sure to join us next week for exciting Mountain West Conference action. Florida State travels to Provo. They'll take on number nine BYU, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Also log on to your link for collegefootballversus.com. For Glenn, for Lindy, for all the men and women in the crew, thanks so much for your time. I'm Joe Beninati. Stay tuned after the break. It's the Craftsman Post Game Show. 